Uh, joining us now <laughs> is, I mean, every time I watch him fight, it's absolute electricity coming through the television. There's absolute electricity radiating through the O2 arena. He puts everybody at and done, and then immediately afterwards, the place goes bananas. He does an interview where he says, ah, I should have put him out quicker. Mm -hmm. Should have put him out quicker. He's always disappointed with how great he is in the octagon. We don't know that, Patty. I wish next time mm -hmm. you just celebrate because we think everything you do is great. Then you took time to give a speech on something that's very important to people all around the world, not just in in England, not just in the United States. Mental health's a real thing. We've all been affected by it. We hope you're okay. And obviously it's a bummer, ladies and gentlemen. UFC lightweight stud, Scouser, Patty the Batty. Yeah, yeah Patty! Oh, I just walked into an elevator, they said. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Elevator <laughs> oh, to the top. Ladies and gentlemen, Patty the Batty! Yeah! How are you, Patty? What's happening? How are you, lad? How's I'm life? Good. What's going on? Just I, was in the, I was in a lift then, like, well, an, an elevator, as you would call it. A lift? Where are you at? Are you in America? Are you back in England? Where are you right now? No, I'm in England, gentlemen, London at the minute. Flying to Chicago tomorrow, so just enjoying one last little bit of food. Yeah, I was about to say, how's the last week been after uh, celebration? You've been diving back in. What's that little milkshake right there? Yeah, a little, little Kinder Bueno milkshake. Where are you? What is your weight right now, if you had to guess? I'm going to clip. <laughs> uh, all right, let's dive. Um, yeah. I thought you said that, that 200 pounds or something. I'm not sure. Uh, well, you look amazing. I hope you're radiating. Obviously, what you talked about after the fight was so serious and hit home with so many people. We want to extend our deepest apologies that you're going through that, your friend group, and we appreciate you taking the platform to make the world a better place, Patty. I think everyone who has a platform like me should do what we can for people less conscious to themselves and that's just that's just something I've always thought of and I feel like everyone should be like that so it's, it's something that I'll always stand by. Well we appreciate it and let's get to the fight now and let's talk about your future. Uh, why are you always disappointed with how you end a fight? Well you know it's always like ah, I could have beat him quicker I could have done this. We understand that you might not have had your perfect game but god damn it you're perfect in our eyes. I mm -hmm. hope you I hope you know that. Like the fans it's like everything this guy touches is gold but it always feels like you're not exactly thrilled. Is that just how you always be and is that how you operate? Yeah, that's just how I am sometimes. I was I was disappointed in my performance because I felt like I should have went out there and blasted them out in the round. I know I still finished them. Finished them that's never been finished before. You know, he's had 11 pro fights, lost one. I'd have never been finished, and I choked this ass, lad. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? He got dealt with like I knew he was going to get dealt with. I, I said the whole time he was going to get finished, so I thought it was going to be a knockout, but he, defend, he defends punches well. It's quite weird. He doesn't like to defend them like in a skillful way, but he defends them well, and then like just grabs all of you. But I think I won the first round on all judges' scorecards and then got the finish in the second, so... I'm not too fussed like that. As obviously when I look back now, I realise I was being very emotional going into the fight, and like I've watched the fight back, I watched it back today, and every punch I throw, I'm trying to take his head off. Throw a punch where I'm trying to set a shot up. I'm just walking forward, throwing punches. Do you? Is that something you tr you're gonna have to like try to find a way to to rein in or figure out like moving forward, or can you fight like that every time? I could fight like that every time, lad. I could go, I'm, I'm a big fat bastard at the minute. But I could, <laughs> someone rang me now and said, get out after the statement. I'd be out there beating them up. <laughs> what is it you said the last time to us? Like, you like getting hit in the face? You don't mind getting Yeah, I, I, I enjoy getting punched and punching people in the face. It sounds very weird, but I enjoy it. Is it like well, you're 19 and 3? You've only had three fights in the UFC. I looked this up today, Patty, and I, listen. I might be a bearer of bad news here. This is not how I feel. I looked this up. How are you the 38th ranked lightweight in the UFC? And what is it, what is this all? When are we getting you? There's no champ in your division. When are you? What, what is the deal? Have you talked? No, there is. There is. You can't say there's no champ in our division. There is. His name's Charles Oliveira. Love. He is the champ in this division. What, why are you 38th, though, you think? What's that, just because you've only had three fights? Or what is the deal? The UFC fights are, have you seen some of the names on that list? Some yeah. of the names on that list are scary, lads. No, <laughs> not to you, right? It, it, do you have to look at that type of thing, and are you already planning out who your next fight is, or will they tell you? I don't care, lad. As I say, some of the 
the the the UFC lightweight division is the best division in the whole of the UFC. By far, it's the deepest division. Um, all the way down to like rank fifty in lightweight is very good. So I don't mind taking my time climbing up the rankings. I'm not in no rush. I want to take me time and earn a lot of money as I do take me time. Yeah, I mean, doesn't Dana? Yeah. Hey, Patty, doesn't Dana want you to fight in New York here? At what two eighty one is it? Yeah, but come on, lads. <laughs> That's the tax man just taking all me dough. That's all happening, lad. The tax man's not getting my money in New York. <laughs> so you'll fight Vegas, though? Yeah, Vegas, December, lad. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, Vegas, uh, state income tax, much different than New York. I like the way your head's at. You just said something about taking your time and collect your money or whatever, but we all, I mean, in the arena, the same thing, and I know, obviously, the, he the main event was fam I mean, I change the channel after your fight. I mean, yeah. I, absolutely. You have to feel that, obviously, every time you walk into an arena. What's that feel like whenever the whole fucking place knows Patty the Batty? Is it, this is what you've worked for your entire life, lad, right? Yeah, this, this is what I've worked for. This is I've always envisioned this and visualized this. I've always knew this was coming. So for me, it's not like surreal or nothing because I always knew it was going to happen. Where for like my friends and my family and even my team, some of them it's a bit surreal. But to me, this is just another day at the office, lad. And even I do notice it like, after I fight, you can see people just going to the exit, trying to get the, the, the quickest taxi so that they haven't got to sit around for when everyone gets off. Yeah, I do that in my bathroom. That's all right. I'm going to take a shit and probably not going back. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Patty, how was the uh, post game celebration? I saw you messing around with, I think it was Stormzy in the back, you know, hanging out with some of the lads. Lad, see Mo Molly High Seed them. Molly High Seed Stormzy. What's that? High Seed? Yeah, it's a wrestling technique. Molly High Seed Storms, he picked him up over her head. And I, like, he was about to go like that on his shoulder. And I had to just jump over and catch his arm to make sure he didn't. It was hilarious. Oh, you guys are getting after it. I mean, you and Meatball Molly are a tag team for the UFC that they just have to love. You two on the same card is entertainment from literally walking back in the back through both fights, and then afterwards. It's amazing. Have you guys been friends your entire life? And I uh, No, I, we, we met each other in the gym. You know what I mean? We met each other in the gym years ago. About 10, 11 years ago now. Like, But she didn't start training properly at first. She came into each spa with someone we used to have in the UFC called Rosie Sexton, the first ever British woman in the UFC. Um, she came into boxing spa with her years ago, and then Molly ended up just coming back and getting into MMA, and... As you say, the rest is history. Hey, she's awesome, huh? You see her, like, yeah. you, you two work together in the gym at the same time, same fight camps, obviously? Yeah, we do a lot of things, like, similar things, but we don't really train together. I'm far too big for that at squash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of, you did a little, uh, you did a teabag twerk on a guy back. You know, you didn't go front on him. You didn't go back on him. At what moment do you remember? Is it as you're cinching it in, you're like, hey, don't forget to drop your dick on this oh. guy, lad. Like, is that as you're doing I it? I know what it was. I went to stand up, and as I stood up, like, as soon as I finished them, I stood up and said, like, I just, it come in me head, teabag, quick. I did, to just, boom, boom. Don't forget. Got the teabags <laughs> in, lad. And uh, he was on it, though, when he stood up as fast as he could when he saw the first teabag come down. Have you talked to him since teabagging? He was all right in the case, and then after it, he tried to um, see an interview of him going, Liverpool's a dumb. <laughs> oh, a dumb. whoa. Oh. Yeah, talking shit. What's that all but about? He, he, he never even come to Liverpool, so what's he on about? He went to London. What's a <laughs> four-hour car journey away? Scousers would beat the fuck out of him anyways, wouldn't they, Paddy? Huh? He steps one foot in Liverpool, it's over. He wouldn't like it. Yeah. Hey, when you get a guy's arm attached to his side with your, your leg, just wrapping it in completely, and you're just waiting for him to give you the neck, it's inevitable there? Is that is that in your head? That's what you're thinking? And is there any way it out is. of For me, I think it's inevitable. So that's one of my positions. I like getting to that position on someone's back and choking them or punching them until the ref stops it. And when I have one arm strapped, I just feel like, yeah, it's over. When I, when I done that, I remember at one point, I hit him with the knee and I knew it, it hit him. And then I ended up on his back. And I was on his back. I can remember looking at the clock and seeing him um, two minutes 30. And I was like, yeah, 
this is over. <laughs> I've got well enough time. You know what I mean? I've got well enough time. I could have just sat there for another two minutes playing about with them, but I just ended up wrapping it up. And did you wiggle them over in front of Portnoy on purpose? I mean, it was like <laughs> there was a shot of obviously you uh, wrapped around the guy's back like a koala, mm -hmm. and then Portnoy with his wig on right over. The, it was like a it was straight out of a fucking movie yeah. almost the way it was set up. Nah, the, there was an even funnier one in the first round. When I went for that guillotine on him, the choke, and I was on my back, like, as I started to kick Jordan off me, I just, like, looked at me right, and I just saw Dave, and I thought, oh, my God, I can't lose while my, my, my boss is here. <laughs> I'm going to have to sort my shit out here. What are you doing, Pat? And I just, like, I, I had to put it on him. He had a fucking monocle. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. uh, go ahead, Ty, your question for Patty. Patty, last time you came on the show, I think it was on Instagram that they basically had you shadow banned, and then now, I think it was the, the day of your fight, uh, your Twitter... Oh, the night before, lad. Yeah, the, the Friday night, the night before. Yeah, they, they suspended your Twitter account. What the hell's the deal? Why why is it you're getting preyed on on social media when like you have this message post-fight? I don't think you're really like a negative force on there. Yeah, like, Why happens? are they always in your shit? Because, lad, people give me shit, so I don't let the trolls win and give it back. And my accounts get banned for it. What's that all about? Because Twitter's a gang of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Why is Elon Musk flap lad and not bought it? Elon, buy Twitter lad. Stop flapping. <laughs> we need you. That's what you're saying. Yeah, we need them. We need them to source this Twitter out lad. But I've, I've joined an elusive list there. Like, haven't I? Get, like, the only other person I can think of that's banned off Twitter is Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta create your own platform. I mean, that's what I think yeah. that's what you're gonna have to do, <laughs> Alex. Go ahead, AJ. The only people what the only people that suffer off that though really is me fans, because I I interact with people on Twitter all the time. I'll talk back to people, and it's me fans what are gonna suffer through that. Like Twitter's the least used out, out of them all. Everyone uses TikTok and Instagram and that more now. So the only people that's gonna suffer off that's the fans. So Twitter, up yours. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, you think uh, you think the tea bag could be your finishing move from here moving forward? I, I don't think anyone's really used it that much in the past. It could be your thing. It could, lad. If I could start tea bagging people over cheeky, because that's the only reason he got tea bag, lad, because he was being cheeky in the foot and before it, <laughs> talking this big game, lad, like he was going to do this and do that, lad. He couldn't finish your dinner. <laughs> it's a great move. When are you getting back into training, Patty? Well, I'm being away. Since I got back home, I um, I went to Wales with the dog for two days in my bed, and then I went to Dublin over the weekend, and now I'm in London. So I'm flying to Chicago tomorrow, and then I'm just going to have to get back training as soon as I'm there, really. All right, well, as soon good. as I land stateside, as you would say. Yeah, stateside. Well, as soon as you land here, we can't wait to hear what's next for you. Enjoy this. You're a fucking good human, no matter what the lizards at Twitter and Instagram say, pal. You know that fella. I'm here to kick any lizard's head off. <laughs> we need it. Ladies and gentlemen, Patty the Batty. Yeah, what a fucking entertaining guy. I'll tell you what, he drops into that Scouser accent sometimes, and I'm. it feels like I'm talking oh, to Andrew yeah. Luck again where I'm trying to use context clues to figure out what's <laughs> being said. He is electrifying, though, that guy. How comfortable has he been the last week, too? Oh, yeah. That's what he, he's like. Listen, I'll do a fight camp, but when I win this thing, we are going to celebrate. Wait. We are going to celebrate the the discipline that we put in there, and that's why I think everybody fucking loves that guy. I love Patty the Batty. Yeah, I don't think he was kidding when he said, like, yeah, I'm like 200 pounds right now. Mm -hmm. He's probably gained yeah. like 30 pounds since his fight. Can't blame him. That's how I operate as well. I just wish I was as big of a badass. And he says that's one of his favorite positions when he has somebody's back and their arm is... <laughs> yeah. I can, see that being a pretty, <laughs> yeah. I can see that being a pretty fun position to be in, you know, like... Hey, this guy is now in a one-armed fight in which I am attacked, attached to his back. And he gets that thing locked in like a triangle. Mm -hmm. There's no arm that's going to beat two no, legs. No, no. no so chance. as soon as that thing gets trapped to the side of the body, it's this is it. Yeah. Is, and he just beats the hell out of yeah. their face. And they can defend it. And then as soon as they just accidentally move their hand, it's in there. And then, eh, eh. Yeah. And that's all she wrote. <laughs>